Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video and welcome to this another video on Next.js. I thought we have done so much, why not to show you the deployment part and some assignment part as well. So I've added some of the assignments for you, we'll first talk about that and then we are going to talk about how we can take this and deploy on the Varsal. Varsal is one of the great platform where you can host your Next.js application. Our database is already online in MongoDB so we'll utilize that. Uh, let's go ahead and try this out. Let me share my screen uh, with you. So this is what I've added in the Next.js readme file. You might have already seen that in the repo. Uh, it's nothing. It says a detailed course on Next.js. We can just actually move this here a little. And I have added what are the tech stacks that we have uses. Mail trap, Next.js, TypeScript, Mongo, basics. Nothing much big deal. And here's my YouTube channel link as well. So I've added a YouTube. I'm pretty sure you're watching this on YouTube. If you're watching it somewhere else, hey, I have a YouTube channel. Uh, apart from this, there is assignment. Uh, the first assignment is improve the UI of the application. Right now, we were focused too much on implementing uh, the functionality part and the bare minimum basics of UI so that you can understand the flow of the application. Now, definitely integrating too much of the Tailwind, we could have done that. We could have just copied and pasted that, that I'll surely do that in the upcoming videos. But it doesn't really add any much value. If you request me enough in the comment section, I would definitely add some of the videos which are focused purely and purely on Tailwind skills. Uh, so I can do that if you wish, want to have it, let me know in the comment section. But anyways, in this one, I have skipped that. So that's your assignment to add more beautiful UI, maybe make button more beautiful. Uh, maybe use a theme for it or maybe have better inputs. So something like that, you can have it. And also add a feature of forgot password. We have done exactly same thing in the verify email. And again, just watching the video is no benefit for you. And in case somebody saying, hey, why didn't you do it? You should have done that. This is an incomplete tutorial. Uh, I would say probably you'll never learn programming. If you'll just watch the videos and expect me to do 100% of it, uh, you won't be learning programming, so I'm not bothered about you. Those who are bothered about learning the programming, now is the time that you achieve it. Now, if anybody is actually uh, completing the entire thing, just let me know uh, your GitHub repository, or you can send me a, a kind of a request here, pull request, but make sure your pull request is not merging your code in my code. I don't want that. I want user to see only the code which I have written. I don't want other people, otherwise people will be confused that, hey, from where this code came in, uh, so only after the hint, just try to add, or I can just add it just in front of you, that we can go ahead instead of the hints up here. Uh, so we'll just add uh, your completed repository. So we'll just go ahead and say something like this. Uh, your uh, completed assignments, assignments, and you can just add your links up here. So we can add here something like this. Uh, add your repo. So if you have completed uh, everything, so you can add up your repo link here. I'll just push it again. Uh, so you can just go ahead and add a repo link here that, hey, here is my completed version of it or probably a deployed version of it. So go ahead and add it. That kind of a pull request only I'll be accepting. If your pull request is going to make any uh, kind of a mess, then I'll not accept it. If there is a conflict, I'll not accept it. Make sure you actually update the conflict, take the proper pull and everything. So go ahead and do that. That's your contribution in here. All right, so that's the basic of how you can do that. I have even written your forgot password hints as well that what user needs to do, it's a five-step process. I have given it here so that it will help you to learn all of that. All right, now this whole thing is being pushed. So let's go ahead and actually push this final readme as well. I'll just add this changes. Uh, add your contribution here. Gear <laughs> here and I'll just commit this. And we're gonna push this so that this also this is also available there. So all right. So now everything is being pushed onto the GitHub. It's time that we actually go ahead and take it on to the next JS uh, Vercel actually deployment part. But before that, we need to actually create another user. I have actually removed all the previous users, so I'll just create another one uh, just for the testing. Uh, this user will be I'll just call this one Hitesh Hitesh one two three. Really bad. Uh, show the password Hitesh one two three. Add a built-in role of write and write any database. Not a good idea, but we'll still do it. <laughs> I'm just uh, making this up all here so that you understand that what are the security issues and concern uh, which you should be having. Uh, so we'll just go into database and we will be connecting with a string. So I'll just copy this so that I can actually inject this in here. So I'll just copy this. Go back up here and let's go ahead and deploy this. So Varsal. 
And we need to bring up on our, all of our environment variables here. So I'll just click on project. And this one is React, not React, it's actually Next.js. Next.js, full stack auth. Yeah, we want to import this. Uh, this whole thing is good. Here is our environment variable. This is where we actually inject all of this. So let's go ahead and open up our environment variables. Since I've deleted everything, so I'll just go ahead and open up the sample.env. Hey, I can just close all of this. We don't need this. Sample.env, I'll just paste uh, this into sample link. So the username that we are using is Hitesh and the password is Hitesh123. And what you need to do further is add up your database name. So we'll just call this as next YouTube auth. Yeah, that's good. So the first variable that we have is Mongo URI. Copy that. Enter into your domain variable. Just like this, you had your environment variables and you don't have to do even a single thing. Paste it, copy its value. Paste the value here, add this up. We have one more. How can I get, yeah, here it is, one more. We'll have the token secret. Make sure your token secret is, oops. Make sure your token secret is way better than mine. Uh, I'll just add uh, some complex token. Yeah, that, that's good enough. I'll add this and we can also go ahead and add a domain. Uh, domain, yeah, that's that's a crucial one because right now the domain is, we have no idea what domain we have. Uh, so we need to come back here and add this uh, after the deployment because we'll get a URL. If we would be having our own domain, then there would be no problem. I can just go ahead and do this. But we need to add the environment variable a little bit later, this domain part. Uh, we'll just click on deploy. And that is it. That is it all it takes to deploy your application, it will start building. And if we don't have any bugs or issues, we will be able to deploy it. If we have some issues or something like that, obviously we have to <laughs> debug that part. Uh, but again, there is nothing much. It will just give me a URL and all I'm looking for is a Vorcel app URL so that I can add it into my domain. As we can see, this is the domain that we have. We don't have to have ports and stuff like that. So this is taking us some time in building. The build phase actually takes some time, yeah. Okay, maybe we should pause the video here. There's no point of unnecessarily staring the screen here. Okay, so let me pause the video. All right, so you just missed the confetti. Uh, there is a confetti that actually comes up here. Uh, so right now notice here it says add your domain. I don't have my domain. Uh, that's why I missed out that environment variable. Uh, so again, uh, so let's continue the dashboard of it where this is. So I can see my application is up and running and this is the deployment URL. So that is what I'm looking up for. So I need to actually copy all of this. Uh, Next.js, full stack auth, and then some random variable dash my username dot warsel dot app. I think there is a better way of actually uh, domains. Let's just click on it and we can edit this to have a better URL. Uh, so let's just have this Next year's yes, full stack auth versal app. Yeah, we'll just copy all of this. And now we need to actually add this into environment variable. So there is environment variable. Uh, without this, the thing is not going to work. So we have our token secret Mongo. Uh, we need to actually provide domain and then the value of it. So whatever the domain, wherever you are deploying, it needs that. This is what we are using in our mailing services. So make sure you actually get that. And also there is a issue here that in the, if you'll go into the source and inside the helpers and in the mailer, I have actually deployed my own user ID and password here, but I have actually deleted that account. So it doesn't really work anymore. Uh, but still uh, make sure you actually use this to do, add these into the credential and ENV. That's a security concern here. Uh, but anyways, so I'll just go ahead and say that, hey, this is add another one. No, add an, save this one. So please define the name for environment variable. Uh, accidentally added that one. So the, uh, we have all these domains and tokens and everything. Now our app should be there. Uh, so now in theory, at least, we should be having this being deployed. And it takes some time. So there we go. We can sign up and we can log in. That's good. And we'll just grab Hitesh and we'll be saying Hitesh at the rate google.com which is not true and we'll be saying one two three four five six very secure password 
uh, we'll do the sign up. Obviously, our mail will fail because that doesn't exist. So that part of the code is not going to work. It's saying processing, taking some time. And uh, we got this sign up uh, because our mailing is actually failing. Otherwise, we would have got redirected there. Uh, but in theory, at least, we should be getting some of the users in the documentation here or the document. So there we go. So there we go. Obviously, uh, we didn't got properly redirected and everything, but we are getting this. Uh, the reason for that is because in this portion, we are having a bug, which is intentional. I didn't want it to expose my credentials. Otherwise, we would have seen that the, everything is going nice and easy. So now, one more assignment for you is extract these uh, user ID and password, put that into environment variable so that uh, we can actually inject them there. Uh, that would be really, really nice. But now you know that how you can actually have your application and stuff like that. Uh, we can log in and we can go ahead and say Hitesh at the rate google.com and we should be able to get this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We should be able to log in. It's processing, login. And the login, now we are getting this. So get user details. I'm able to get my user details, hopefully. There we go. And I can visit the profile as well. This is working fine. I can go back and hit the logout button. Let me see that if we are getting this token as well. Inside this and application and cookie. And there we go, we got the token. This is how the real world application works. And we can hit the logout. And this should be taking us back. Only thing that's not working is our mail. And we know why it is not working. In the code part, as I always say, it's important to know how your code is working. But it's also important to know that why your code is not working, which is the part of the flow that might be broken. This actually helps you to understand and debugging uh, debug a lot faster because you understand your code in and out. And that's what I always focus that please go ahead and understand the part that it's not always about working code. It's also about the ability to understand that which portion of my code is causing the bug or issue. As the application will grow larger, which surely we'll see later on, you'll understand that, hey, there is so much more to learn and so much more to understand. But this was a fun deployment part. Told you, deployment is super easy. It's actually fun. So in this video, you have learned how you can deploy, use your net environment variables, some of the issues that we have that you can fix up there and can actually make a pull request that, hey, my repository is now all good and perfect, Atesh. Can you add this into the readme? Again, I repeat this, all those people who will be sending an unmindfully uh, these pull requests, which actually merge your code, I will not accept that. I'll write a comment below that, that, hey, you didn't understood the video. But those who will be just sending me the pull request where there's a link of your repo in the readme file only, I'll happily accept that. And maybe thousands and thousands of people will be able to check out your repository that what's your version and your implementation of the assignments that we have done. So be cautious. Don't just mindlessly send the pull request. Uh, be cautious about that. And in case I miss you, uh, miss your pull request or something, let me know in the LinkedIn or Instagram or Twitter, wherever you like. That's it for this one. Let's call this one as an end for the series officially. Uh, I'll definitely make more videos. So do check out and subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you up in another such video.